personal introduction, I will say this. The very first time I got to host Poppy Borboroglu of the Global Penguin Society, I finished the broadcast and immediately went and donated to his cause. It is very rare that I run into anyone that isn't as enthusiastic as I am, uh, and Poppy blows me out of the water. So if you are in your life, if you can find something that you are as passionate about, as Poppy is about saving penguins, saving habitats uh, in his native Argentina and beyond, you are a very lucky person indeed. And as a result of his efforts, they are one of the signature groups that we are sponsoring and helping support through our efforts in the Global BioFest to raise money for amazing conservation organizations. So I'll share at the end of this talk how you can do that and help support him and some of our other key partners for this program. But without further ado, I want to bring in Poppy. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today, man, and uh, nice to see you again. This is great. <laughs> Hello, Jesse. So great to see you and fantastic to meet all the people that are watching us right now. Uh, and thank you so much for your kind words about our, our work in conservation. My pleasure. Well, take us away and hopefully uh, as many, uh, many other people are as inspired as I am by all the stuff that you're doing. So I'll leave you to it. <laughs> you are uh, the, the president of our fan club. Thank you so much. <laughs> so now I will share the screen. There we go. Excellent. So, as I was saying, thank you so much for the kind invitation to join this amazing, another fantastic edition of the Global Biodiversity Festival. And uh, thank you so much for your interest on penguins and, and conservation, what we do in conservation. Uh, the, I, I'm, I, in this presentation, I'm going to tell you uh, why I call this presentation Vote for Penguins, because I will show you why you think you have to think about penguins and oceans as a candidate if you are concerned about the sustainability of our oceans and our planet. Uh, specifically, I will show you different aspects of the world of penguins. We will, we will, I will show you different species of penguins and I will explain why penguins are a fragile group of species and what are the characteristics that make penguins more vulnerable. And in the end, I will show you what we are doing from the Global Penguin Society to help penguins uh, globally. So penguins are just amazing. They are fantastic. And personally, I admire them because they are loyal, they are brave, and they are determined. And you know, penguins can be hardy. They are tough animals. But still, they need our help to cope with the main threats uh, caused by humans. And um, Another important aspect of penguins is that ecologically, uh, due to their features, they are amazing and fantastic indicators of the health of the oceans and the conditions of the coasts. But the oceans are in trouble and so are the penguins. There are 18 different species of penguins and half of them, the ones included in the red box, are listed as threatened by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Sometimes we think that penguins are fine and they're all happy because we tend to see them in cartoons and in movies where they are having fun. But this is not the case. Some penguin species, like the yellow-eyed penguin uh, in the top left corner, they live in New Zealand and the global population is less than 1,700 pairs. Then we have, for example, other cases, the African penguin, uh, whose population collapsed because it declined 95% in the last 100 years, declining from over 1 million pairs to under 2,000 pairs now. So this map shows you the world, but from a penguin perspective, because the Antarctica is not the center of the penguin world. So penguins colonies, penguin colonies are located in Antarctica, also in Oceania, in New Zealand and southern part of Australia, but also in South Africa and Namibia and in some countries in South America. And the red flag shows you the place where I am right now in southern part of Argentina in Patagonia. This is penguin land. I have penguins as my neighbors. Sometimes when we think about penguins, the image that comes to our mind could be a group of a big group of penguin, maybe on the be on the coast, or maybe on on a dense colony, or maybe in, like in this picture where you can see several penguins swimming. But it is important to realize that each penguin has a life, a personality, 
a family, each one of them, they have a unique story. And uh, in our studies, we have been able to track special penguins throughout all their lives, so we know everything about them. Clarita is one of our special penguins. She's a Magellanic penguin female, and she is one of the first six females that settled down in a colony that we discovered 12 years ago. The colony was called Pedral. And through Clarita's life, I will show you how hard it is right now to be a penguin and what are we doing specifically to help penguins. When we first found Clarita, she was incubating her eggs. Like you can see, she has an egg under the flipper, but she was sharing the nest with a bottle of plastic in the back. And this is not unusual because we are finding more and more plastics on penguin colonies. Plastics are harmful because big pieces of uh, penguins can get entangled in big pieces, of, big pieces of plastics in the ocean and on the coast, but they can also eat pieces of plastics that can harm them and kill penguins. Clarita stayed together with her partner called Honorio for eight years, and both of them, they raised seven chicks successfully. But after one winter, during the winter migration, he, Honorio never came back and we wonder what happened to him. Oil spills have killed thousands of penguins in four continents already, but we do not think that this was the cause of the disappearance of Honorio because we have, fortunately, we haven't had major oil spills in recent years. But maybe he was likely killed by, by fisheries because many times fisheries operate in the same areas where penguins are eating and they get entangled, as you can see in these pictures, they get entangled and they die uh, during their fishing operations in the fishing nets. Climate change is also a threat for Clarita and many penguins because it, it is changing the availability of food uh, in the places and in the moments where food is most needed. And that is when chicks are small because they have to be fed very frequently every 24 to 36 hours. And if the food is far away, the parents, they have to swim all the way. It takes longer for them to come back. And many times the chicks are dead by the time they come back or they end up uh, feeding their chicks less. And that uh, causes the decline of several populations in the long term. Climate change is also increasing the frequency and also the um, severity of storms. Uh, these storms most times occur when chicks are small, like the one that you can see in the picture. So they nest, they flood, and penguins get the penguin chicks get uh, wet because their feathers are not waterproof. And then these storms come with strong winds, cold winds from Antarctica, and they die from hypothermia. So this is a new concern, new source of mortality for penguins. And back to the colony where we found Clarita, the colony was called Pedral, there was a big problem with human disturbance where people could access the area with ATV and motorbikes. They, could, they used to throw garbage and set bushes on fire to make barbecues close to the penguins. They used to hunt or bring dogs and pets that were harming the penguins. So against many odds and using the scientific information that we collect, we were able to designate this colony as a wildlife refuge and protect this colony. And we also encourage the landowners to make a sustainable, low-scale, ecotouristic operation. And that helped to generate genuine jobs for local people, contributing to the livelihoods of the community. When we found this colony 12 years ago, the colony had only six pairs of nests and was severely threatened. But after a decade of protection, the colony is now 3,200 pairs. And you might be wondering by now what happened to Clarita. So Clarita, fortunately, she found a new partner called Eduardo and she rebuilt her life and they both keep on coming year after year to this colony to breed chicks again. But globally, penguins are still facing many threats. And one of the issues with the penguins is that they face threats not only in the ocean, but also on land. So they accumulate threats in both 
environments. And this is because penguins are also vulnerable because they have particular features. One is that they only lay one or two eggs per season, and some penguin species, like the king penguins, they uh, take, they invest 15 months, sorry about that, they invest six, uh, in 15 months to raise their chicks. So if they lose the eggs or if they lose the chicks, they lose uh, one or two years of their lives. The other feature of penguins uh, that makes them more vulnerable is that they nest, uh, they breed in colonies. So in one moment of the year, they are all together in one spot. So that makes them more fragile and vulnerable to some threats like, for example, oil spills. And penguins swim hundreds and thousands of kilometers during their lifetimes, uh, and they explore vast areas of the ocean. Think about this. Uh, a Magellanic penguin, for example, they, during their lifetimes, they swim the equivalent of swimming around the planet 12 times. Because remember, penguins do not fly. And exactly that is the main feature of penguins. They don't fly. But I want you now to meet the monster penguin. Uh, this is a digital recreation of a fossil that was found in New Zealand recently, in the last few years. And this guy uh, stood up up to five feet tall and weighed over 170 pounds. So of course, an animal like that couldn't, couldn't, couldn't fly. Uh, this fossil uh, lived 62 million years ago. But not flying was an advantage for them 60 million years ago, but now it became a disadvantage. So to help penguins cope with the main threats, we created the Global Penguin Society over 10 years ago to help penguins cope with these threats. We are based in Argentina, where I am right now. We have also a base in, in the United States, but we have different kinds of activities in 20 countries so far, countries where penguins breed or countries in the Northern Hemisphere that have interest in penguin research and conservation. And now to show you more details about the Global Penguin Society, I'm going to ask Jesse to play the video. If you can do that, Jesse. Penguins reflect how wonderful and fragile our planet Earth is. They are indicators of the health of the oceans and reveal to us the problems caused by human actions. Global Penguin Society is an international organization that promotes the conservation of all 18 penguin species in the world and the protection of the coasts and oceans they inhabit. To help penguins cope with the main threats they face, we work to generate useful conservation science, promote the protection of their habitats, and carry out multiple environmental education activities. Our education program aims to foster a conservation culture so that people value and understand the importance of protecting penguins and their environments. Through one of our main educational activities, we bring local students and communities to visit penguin colonies in person. Kids are visiting penguin colonies often for the first time in their lives, despite living very close in the same region. We offer them the experience of meeting penguins so that the next generations appreciate and preserve them. We provide lessons, donate books, and provide educational materials to schools so that learning continues in the classroom and at home. In addition to teaching local communities, we also carry out virtual education programs to reach the international community of children and adults. This includes digital educational material on our website, online classes to thousands of students streamed live from remote penguin colonies, as well as presentations and lectures given in person in multiple countries. Penguins live both at the sea and on land, so they uniquely face threats in both environments. Plastic pollution is one of the major threats that affects penguins on different continents, putting their lives at risk. To raise awareness of this growing problem in the communities, we organize beach cleanup events at penguin colonies and nearby areas. We also carry out awareness campaigns to reduce the consumption of single-use plastics at beach resorts. 
All these actions aim at generating behavioral changes to benefit the environment. The health of the oceans is critical for the survival of penguins and the fate of our planet. Learn more about these charismatic animals so you can join our global efforts to protect them at globalpenguinsociety.org. Thank you, Jesse. So that video uh, show some of the, our activities, mostly focused on our educational activities. But in terms of science, one of our main actions is to track penguins at sea to identify their, their feeding routes. Uh, in this picture, you can see a Fjordland penguin in, from New Zealand with a, with a tracking device in, on its back. And with, that, with this uh, research, we are able to see where are the penguins when we don't see them. And here you can see different lines. These are the feeding routes, for example, in, from one colony that is from here, from Argentina, from Patagonia. And with this scientific information, then we work together with the governments to propose the creation of protected areas in the ocean and protect the feeding grounds, grounds but also the breeding grounds, the, the colonies where penguins are uh, uh, raising their chicks. Then we use this information to propose the creation of protected areas. And one example is that six years ago, we created the Patagonia Azul UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, or Blue Patagonia. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this is something that we are very proud of because it is still the largest of its kind in Argentina. It has almost 8 million acres, uh, similar to the, to the size of the state of Maryland in the United States or, or Belgium. And it protects 20 colonies, in, including 40% of the entire population of Magellanic penguins. But it also benefits many other species, like 67 species of seabirds, the entire population of these flightless ducks, or 61 species of terrestrial birds, 35 species of terrestrial mammals, like that Patagonian hare, or pumas, for example, and 35 species of marine mammals, including the southern right whale, and different species of dolphins. So this is a clear example of how penguins can benefit many other species they coexist with. And last year, this is a great, this is great news. Uh, we developed the management plan for a, a fragile area, also in, in northern Patagonia. And thanks to that, it increased the visibility and the value of that area. And it, it will be designated soon as a, as a new marine national park in Argentina, protecting a lot of cultural values because there are Indian, there are graves of indigenous people, graves of 3,000 years. And also it includes a, a big biodiversity protecting over 400 species. And this is something I wanted to share also, uh, because during the quarantine, uh, we didn't want to lose time. So together with our team, we elaborated two books. Uh, they are called Conociendo a los Pinguinos, or Getting to Know the Penguins. They're going to be available in English and, and in Spanish. And it is a learning and activity book with different kinds of drawings, uh, crossword puzzles, uh, you know, some activities to paint. So there's an, one, book is up to six years old and the other one is for children from six up to 13 years old so as, as you can see this uh, material will be printed and all our educational material is available online in our website the global society.org and we also print it and distribute it for free in places where they don't have access to internet and we work with the children through radio local radio stations so as you can see, penguins are very important ecologically because they uh, are ex great indicators of the health of the oceans, but they are very important because people have a natural connection with the penguins. So they are the perfect tool to inspire major changes in the attitudes and in the behavior of businessmen, decision makers, and the international community. And back to Clarita and Pedral, Clarita is still a young female. She is 16 years old now, but if she can live up to 35 years old, if we are able to secure a healthy and safe environment for her. So our work benefits Clarita, thousands of penguins, and many species that coexist with the, with the penguins. But we also contribute to the livelihoods of thousands of people in developing countries that depend on ecotourism. 
So our work benefits penguins, people, and the entire planet. Thank you so much. Oh, Bobby, thank you so much. Literally, I, I think you encompass every strategy that every one of our other partners over the last 30 hours has done on the entire planet. So it's, it's always such a pleasure, uh, such a privilege. That was fantastic. And what a great video, too, to highlight all the amazing work you're doing globally. So you spent so much time focusing on Clarita, and this is something that we're seeing more and more with conservation groups around the world is focusing on an individual animal or an individual story because it's so captivating. So I'm curious, you, you talk about bringing kids out to these penguin colonies for the very first time. Uh, why is that so important? What sort of feedback have you had from that where a kid is seeing a penguin that they've never seen before, even if they live right down the street, so to speak? It's an amazing, let, let me tell you, Jesse, that that is taking the kids to, to, to visit the penguin and introduce the kids to the penguins is one of my favorite activities of the year because it recharges us with a lot of energy. And, uh, and, and it is special because I, I always tell that I work on penguin conservation thanks to my grandmother because when I was a small boy, she used to tell me the fantastic stories uh, about her visits to see the penguins here in Patagonia a hundred years ago. And that was very special for me. And uh, you will agree with me that many conservationists, they, we decided to work in conservation because somebody connected us with nature when we were kids. So that is the reason why we put so much effort in those activities, taking the kids to, to visit the, the penguins. And yeah, you know, some of the kids that we started taking, they are 25 years old now. They are, <laughs> you know, they have a key role in those towns in Patagonia or in many other developing countries. Uh, and now they can decide, they can help decide about the future of those penguins. Yeah. So um, I think that is critical to connect and you never know who is in the group. Uh, in one of the towns here in Patagonia, uh, where we started taking the kids, uh, a famous president of Argentina, Perón, used to spend his childhood there. So you never know if you're talking to the next president of a country. Yep. That is why we put so much effort there. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, what, we opened this broadcast by talking a little bit about our backyard bio initiative right now, and that's what we're getting from teachers, is that kids that never used to go into the forest are now taking their brothers and dragging their friends out to go lift up logs and look for salamanders or listen for bird calls. And I think you're absolutely right. I think everyone who's done a broadcast this week and all of us as hosts, you know, we started with that connection, whether it was at a zoo, whether it was in a local nature reserve, maybe just walking down by the local stream. And it's really amazing what you can find on this planet pretty much wherever you go. So I, I think that's such a special story. Um, you talked about what possibly was the cause of the disappearance of Clarita's mate being fisheries and bycatch. Now this isn't something that we've talked about a lot today, but are there efforts being done off the coast of Argentina and beyond to make sure that birds aren't caught in those nets? Bycatch seems to be a really big problem. Is it something that you guys are working on or, or advocating for? Yeah, you know, the, one of the issues with these kind of animals that they migrate a lot. Now they are migrating and they go from southern Patagonia to Brazil. So yeah. they, they, they swim 6,000 miles, you know, like, uh, so it's not that you cannot protect half of the ocean, yeah. but the, you can protect critical areas, at least the areas where they overlap with human activities such as oil developments or fisheries. So declaring or protecting the ocean through protected areas or marine spatial planning or many other tools, you can manage those activities like uh, controlling the kind of gear, the, you know, the places or the, the, the moments of the year where they fish or where they cannot fish. Because with science now, we know exactly when the penguins are going bad. So more knowledge allows us to reduce the conflict with some sectors like fisheries and oil or maritime traffic. That is why science is so useful, because you can have evidence to minimize the conflict and make sure that people can, can do their activity, but we have to secure the needs of wildlife. Yeah. We've been talking about this as a theme through the entire festival. You have carnivores that walk through wildlife corridors here in North America, whales that we can avoid with shipping traffic when they're out in the sea. And so, uh, again, the science-based approach is something that really, again, unifies a lot of our program this week. So it's really nice to see how you guys are, are doing that in such an impactful way. Um, Poppy, you, you uh, again, are at the southern end of South America. We talked about penguins' range being sort of below the equator no matter where they are. So uh, if you're in Maryland, if you're in Vancouver, British Columbia, if you're in Russia, 
what can you do outside of donate to support causes like yours to help protect penguins? Is there anything that a child today can do that really impacts penguin populations in the world? Yeah, exactly. Childs and adults, because I've heard something that is very important uh, yeah. the other day. It says the biggest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. Yeah. So it's, it's not enough to learn about conservation is doing something. We all have a role. And one of the things, Jesse, that human beings we do all the time is buy stuff. We buy articles, we buy services. So we, we, when we buy, we are voting. We are voting for a sustainable thing or an unsustainable world. So pay attention, you know, con do some research about the things you would like to address. And then you can be an educated uh, consumer and you can put your money in the things that you really want to support and make sure they have a sustainable origin and a sustainable destination. You don't have to drive yourself crazy. Just start with something. And you can do that as a child and also an, as a, an adult. Uh, and that would be the main advice because we, can, we, are, we are buying stuff all the time. We are putting our money on things and the world will depend on where we put the money now. Uh, so that, that would be my advice. And the second thing for the penguin, briefly, is that we are having an issue with plastics in the ocean. Please avoid single-use plastics because recycling is not enough. Uh, we have to stop use, producing and using single-use plastics. You touched upon what I uh, sort of over over a thousand broadcasts with Exploring by the Sea of Your Pants and getting the chance to participate in festivals like this as a host. The sort of central message that we hear when it comes to climate change, plastic pollution, biodiversity loss can be encompassed as don't waste. If you're going to buy, buy mindfully. If you're going to buy, make sure that that waste gets put in a place where it's going to be kept and, and stored in a sustainable way. Don't waste emissions. Walk or bike when you can. These things are so, so important. And I think what's nice about the plastic element is that it's a totally apolitical issue. No one sees a penguin with a, a piece of plastic in its mouth or in its nest. No one sees a beach covered in plastic and goes, great. You know, it's something that we can all agree is, is a real plight to a lot of wildlife and places around the globe. And I think that for that reason, it's really rapidly become a major thing in the public consciousness. So I'm really glad you, you spoke on that. Uh, Hobby, uh, but before we wrap up, I just want to say again, uh, you guys are doing such amazing work at the Global Penguin Society. You are one of our, our key partners that we are helping to sponsor for this program. So if people want to check that out, they can go to support conservation at our Global BioFest site. We've also got text to donate lines in the U.S. here and internationally with this number. And if you want to just donate to the amazing work that Poppy and his team are doing, head to the globalpenguinsociety.org. It's a really special program as you got the chance to see today. And so thank you so, so much for spending some time with us. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. And continue enjoying this amazing festival. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Poppy.